Tonight on Q2, SWAT activation. We knew that when the timing was right for us to deploy this search warrant, we were going to have to shut down 312. The delivery of a warrant leads to the shutdown of a highway, a multi-agency operation, and five detained. Plus, a battle rages on. It's just a difficult fight, but us parents aren't going to stop. Tensions high and frustrations rising as a conflict between parents and the Wyola school continues to grow. And I'm Alina Howder. One Billings family is sharing the story of their baby girl who was born with a very rare heart condition. We'll tell you more coming up. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. The latest tonight on a multi-agency response to a home in the Billings Heights. It results in the detainment of five people. Highway 312 of the 2900 block was closed for several hours this afternoon while police say they served a warrant. But prior to that, Yellowstone County called the bomb squad and SWAT to assist. Our David J has the story from here. We're at Highway 312 and Independent Lane, where one of the closures is. The other is the other end at Bench Boulevard and Highway 87. This incident took place about a quarter mile down the road from here. They had a property search warrant, ended up detaining five people. The SWAT team and the bomb squad stayed on scene, do some more work, and the highway was closed for several hours. The Billings Police and Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office SWAT teams responded around 3 o'clock Tuesday afternoon to the 2900 block of Highway 312. Everything so far has worked out exactly how we planned it. Billings Police Lieutenant Matt Lennox says officers had a property search warrant. That search warrant is in relation to an ongoing investigation that we have. The Montana Highway Patrol and the Department of Transportation blocked the road in case the situation turned violent. All the resources were in place and we were prepared as soon as we said go everyone. Everyone knew their job and, and did where they were supposed to go. Lennox says at least one person lived on the property, but was unsure about the other four. They all cooperated with law enforcement, and then the SWAT team came in to make sure no one else was on the property, which is home to several different buildings. SWAT has finished their push through the residence uh, and the outlying buildings and stuff, so they're done. They're going to consolidate down uh, and collapse the command center over to the residence and, and the property. The lieutenant says the Bozeman SWAT team was on standby and the Billings Fire Department provided drone support. The bomb squad conducted a search around 6 o'clock, which Lennox said was not public information. As of now, the investigation continues with regard to the people detained. We'll sort through charges and, and what we have based off what we find and, and what the investigation concludes once we're done. So, and then obviously once if somebody's officially charged with something, then I'll have identifying information and what the charges are. In Billings, David J, MTN News. President Joe Biden delivered a forceful address to the nation today offering full support for Israel. At least 1,600 people are dead on both sides, including 14 Americans, after Hamas attacked Israel on Saturday, marking the beginning of the war. The president condemned those attacks, comparing it to the worst that ISIS has done. This is an act of sheer evil. Parents butchered using their bodies to try to protect their children. Women raped, assaulted, paraded as trophies. President Biden did confirm that several Americans are still among the more than 100 hostages held by the militant group. The U.S. is sending special operators to help Israel coordinate a rescue mission for the hostages. And they're also sending additional military assistance, including ammunition. Consistent airstrikes continue at this hour, with Israeli military saying the assaults are designed to cause maximum destruction in the areas where Hamas terrorists meet. As of now, there are no current plans to send U.S. troops into the conflict zone. House Republicans are holding closed-door meetings tonight and tomorrow morning in hopes of unifying behind one candidate for Speaker of the House. They are trying to avoid a repeat of January when it took 15 rounds of votes to elect Kevin McCarthy. Majority Leader Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan are the leading candidates right now, but neither have the support of the majority. The House can't vote on any legislation, including a resolution denouncing the war in Israel until a new speaker is elected. This situation at Wyola School on the southern edge of the Crow Reservation is continuing to escalate this evening, so much so that classes were canceled today, and we've now found out tonight that they'll be canceled again tomorrow. As Kelsey Boggs reports, it's all because of a battle between parents and school staff that brought law enforcement to the school several times already this year. 
The Wyola school would typically be busy on a Tuesday afternoon, but not today. School was canceled with no reason provided. This stemming from tensions between the school and parents who each allege misconduct on the other's part. Do I want to take them to school tomorrow? Do I want to let them finish off the school week? These are questions on many Wyola parents' minds this week. Children haven't been to school since last Friday after alleged abusive behavior from staff and teachers, including grabbing kids by the arm and calling them degrading names. Our rights are being violated. Christy Oldkayo is one of the parents alleging misconduct, but school officials say it's her who physically abused a teacher last week. MTN learned late Tuesday afternoon that Old Coyote was charged in Crow Tribal Court Friday with multiple offenses. She pled not guilty and posted bond. We reached back out to Old Coyote for her response. She said the allegations against her aren't true and that no physical altercation took place. We are on the move. We are not going to quit because our children deserve an education. The battle between the two groups continued Tuesday when school was canceled for no apparent reason. Do you have any idea why school was canceled? I have no clue. I've heard rumors, but that's all it is, is rumors. MTN reached out to numerous individuals and agencies trying to figure out more information on why school was canceled. This is a list of my notes and all the calls I've made today. John Small, the Bighorn County Superintendent, did not answer, but his office told us they have no comment. The Wyola District Clerk and Board Chairperson have no direct line, and our voicemail for the school has not yet been returned. We went out to the school Tuesday afternoon to try and get some answers. No one answered the door. We're in a blind. We don't know what's going on. On Thursday, the Montana Office of Public Instruction provided MTN with the following statement on the matter. OPI has received secondhand accounts of issues in Wyola. There have been no formal complaints filed with our office. Still, questions remain unanswered. But for parents like Nina Hill and Old Coyote, one thing's for sure. I'm not willing to leave Wyola. That's my home. That's where I was raised. Us parents aren't going to stop. In Wyola, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. Additional cleanup of the Yellowstone River begins this week near the site of June's train derailment and bridge collapse. That derailment sent 10 train cars tumbling into the Yellowstone River, many of them carrying asphalt material. Well, the task force says this additional cleanup comes as low water levels exposed additional asphalt not previously identified. The focus is on mile 21 to 35 of the Yellowstone River, which crews already recovered another 3,600 pounds of asphalt. And because boating is unsafe this time of year, crews are doing the cleanup from the shoreline. So far, crews recovered 235,000 pounds of asphalt. Another warm afternoon. If you just stepped out the door, you knew that today. A look now with the Stockman Bank weather cam. Two days in a row, we made it up to 80 degrees. It was even a little bit warmer first thing this morning. 10 degrees warmer than average for first thing in the day. And by the time we got into the afternoon, only 7 degrees shy of the record for the date. Of course, no additional precipitation. Check that out, though. We're dead on as far as the month average compared to where we would normally be. And so while we are looking at precipitation starting to move in in the next couple of days, today temperatures range anywhere from the 60s in the west to near 80 in the eastern plains. That's because the moisture is headed this way. We'll show you the radar and a breakdown on the forecast coming up. A true sign that winter is not as far away as it seems. The iconic Beartooth Pass is now closed for the seeding season. And according to the Carbon County Sheriff's Office, the Montana Department of Transportation shut down that road for the year this morning. The highway is generally open from Friday of Memorial Day weekend through mid-October. October is Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month, and tonight a Billings family is counting their blessings after their baby girl was diagnosed with a rare genetic abnormality. It could cause sudden death. Our Alina Howder shares their story. Baby Olive Herringer has been to more hospitals than most at only eight months old. Her journey started here at St. Vincent's, and she was eventually diagnosed with long QT syndrome at Children's Hospital Colorado. Her parents are sharing their story, hoping it could save another's life. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't guess that eight-month-old baby Olive Herringer has a rare genetic heart condition. He's so happy. I was 32 weeks pregnant. During my ultrasound, they noticed that her heart rate was very, very low. St. Vincent referred the Herringers to Children's Hospital Colorado. Oh, what's wrong? I went in and we met with Dr. Cuneo. She did an echocardiogram and told us that Olive has long QT syndrome. Long QT syndrome causes irregular heart rhythms. When untreated, it can lead to cardiac arrest. 
Usually it's long QT is inherited and neither Tanner or I have long QT and we don't, we don't, we're not carriers of it. So this was a mutation in Olive that had just happened. It's very rare to, for somebody to be as affected as Olive is, uh, you know, we're talking more than, you know, less than one in 10,000, less than one in 100,000. Pediatric electrophysiologist, Dr. Dustin Nash says Olive syndrome is incurable, but treatable. So after she was born and was big enough, she had a small pacemaker or ICD implanted in her belly. That computer through some wires that sit on the surface of the heart is just like watching all the time to ask the question, is this a normal heart rhythm? And at any point, if it detects something abnormal, it starts to record. Dr. Nash can actually monitor Olive's heart rate from Denver, and he says it's been a best case scenario so far. As far as we know, she was the, the smallest, smallest baby, baby to come out of Denver. To come out of Denver region to get an ICD. The Herringer spent a total of five months in Children's Hospital Colorado, a place they say they owe everything to. Just to have her here is truly amazing. All of our prayers were answered that she was able to come home and live her normal, happy life. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, fiber frustrations, residents speaking out after a cable company damages property and doesn't fix it. And in sports, picture perfect. One eight-man football team making big noise in a small town. That story in just a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.